I'm Wade, and today here at Thoroughbred Diesel, we're going to be installing a coolant fitting on our 2011 Ford with a 6.7 diesel in it. Coolant leaking at the turbo is a common problem on the 6.7 Ford pickup trucks. Today we're going to show you how to change the coolant fitting on the turbo as well as the coolant line on the trucks with Ford OE parts. Now, starting this video out, I have already removed the intake off of the engine. I'm kind of going to touch on that just a little bit, but going back with it once we reinstall, I'm going to show you the right way uh, to take that off. But we have already got the intake off. We're going to take you now and show you where the leak is at exactly on the turbocharger. Okay, again with our 6.7, we've already got the intake off of it. I had pulled the intake off going for the turbo to see if indeed that was where our leak was coming from, and it was. So I'm going to try to show you here. This is our coolant line going to the turbocharger on the 6.7. I'll zoom out there a little bit and refocus for you. So here's our coolant line. I'll get a like going here you can see I went too far you can see the orange crust there on that line that is actually dried coolant from the fitting and there's a little there's a better shot of the fitting there's still with a dust cover over it or the safety cap on it uh, these are jiffy type fittings, but that fitting is leaking on the turbo. So we're going to change that out and as well we're going to change this coolant line that is coming from the turbocharger as well. Before we started our installation of our coolant fitting on our turbo for the 6.7, we drained the coolant out of the main radiator, out of the main coolant system or the primary coolant system as they call it. Uh, that just got, you know, a little bit, little bit of coolant out and gave us a little bit less of a mess to deal with. So let's take a look at the fitting back here. I've got some light centered on it. And one of the most difficult parts of this fitting, or working on this fitting, is the transmission uh, and the engine oil dipstick or transmission engine oil dipstick here. They're right in your way, but if you've got the right tools, you can get around it. Um, this hook right here, you can get one of these just about anywhere. This happens to be a snap on. This is just a longer reach hook. You can put it between the two dipsticks and you can get the uh, safety cover off of it, or that's what we're going after right now on the fitting. So I'm trying to do this one handed and so apologize about the shakes here, but there's our fitting. And I'm going to use the pry bar to pull that cover off. And I'm gonna to try to do it left-handed too. So that long pry bar got us where we wanted to go here. Getting ready to change the coolant fitting on our 6.7 turbo, the first thing that we did is we drained a little bit of coolant out of the primary coolant system. I did this just to keep the mess down in here. To get the safety cover or the dust cover, whatever you want to call it, off the jiffy, this is a jiffy, uh, jiffy type fitting as they call them, uh, you have to uh, use one of these long picks. Uh, you're going to have coolant that is going to be on the uh, pipe itself, on the line itself, so you got to get it, it's crushed up, got to get it cleaned off. Also another thing that you're going to want to have before you start this job is the Jiffy disconnect tool. Sorry about that. The uh, 3 8 inch line, the Jiffy one. Uh, you can pick these up at uh, just about any auto store. Uh, they're called uh, Jiffy type disconnect tools, whatever. So this hook right here, I'm going to take you back in and show you the fitting again on the turbo. I'm going to zoom in here. There's the fitting right there. There's a line going into the fitting, and then there you see the black cover that is on that. That cover is what we're going to go after. That's the nice part about this tool. This tool, we can go right between the 
trans dipstick and the engine coolant and we can get behind it and pull the cover right off. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, I've got it this I don't know if you can see it there, but we're going to, that'll give us access to put our disconnect tool on. Okay, this is the coolant line at the turbocharger with the Jiffy disconnect tool on there. And I just, I've got it where it's angled. The tool itself is angled behind the wastegate bracket here. I know that's a close shot. So I just got it to where, and I turned it to where I knew that the clips had released. So pull on the line, the line's disconnected, then you can move it to where you can pull the line away completely there. So here you can see our fitting. And you can see the fitting there. That is a 19 metric to remove the fitting from the turbo itself. Now it's time to remove the fitting from the turbo. I use a 19 metric deep well, and that will be just about perfect to the deep well socket. It is gonna be just about perfect in length to get you past the um, past the wastegate bracket. So we'll go ahead and loosen the fitting up now. Not many threads to it, so once you get it loose, go ahead and bring her the rest away with your fingers, if you can. Make sure with your intake as well that you have uh, paper towels in the intake or rags in the intake. So here's the fitting out now. You can see that we've had a leak there for a little while. You can also see the seal that's in there in these fittings. And that seal is what was leaking. I'm gonna show you the disconnect tool and how that works on these. Well, I've got an opportunity for a close up here. So the Jiffy fitting, I'm let the camera focus there. Okay, it's not gonna focus. Let's see here. Let me zoom out just a little bit on the camera. Okay, good. So the Jiffy fitting, can see, I know that that's not focused. There it is, it's gonna come in focus. So it's got the clips around it. These tools go inside of the fitting and what that does is when it's inside the fitting, you turn it until it unlocks those clips from the line and then the line can come out directly from it. So then the line pulls straight out there. So there's a look at the tool, how the tool is shaped and then how the clips are inside of those fittings. These are very, very common in Fords. Uh, other manufacturers using them as well. I'm going to replace the coolant line on this truck as well. We're gonna show you how to do that. So we've got our coolant line disconnected from the turbo again. The coolant line runs underneath of the intercooler piping here and it goes to the thermostat junction block. You can see this clamp here. I'm gonna zoom in on the clamp. The little orange tab is on the clamp for the rubber end of this line where it goes into the thermostat junction block again. What I use to get this out is a 90 degree pair of um, long nose pliers. The 90 degree pliers will reach down there and get on that clamp. We'll get on that clamp right there at the end of my finger, sorry. Now I'm gonna show you how to uninstall the coolant line that goes to that turbo. I'm gonna replace this coolant line, just better safe than sorry. Need to have a set of long reach, uh, 90 degree needle nose pliers is what I use on them. Let me show you what we're working with on this. So the turbo, the coolant line to the turbo is a solid tube, it's rigid at the turbo. Then it slips underneath of the intercooler piping here and goes to a junction block right here that's connected to the thermostat. And I'm gonna zoom in there, let the camera readjust for it. The clamp 
that is on the rubber hose end of this is orange there. You can see it. It's got a little orange tab on it. There it is. What you do, use those 90 degree needle nose pliers, squeeze that together. It will lock in that round, that clamp will lock in that round hole and that will leave it uh, compressed. That way you can just pull the line right out. The line is not attached to anything through here. It is just the line going to the turbo again and we will pull it directly out and change it out. All right, here's the line and the fitting as it came off of the truck. You can tell that the fitting inside of here is not in very good shape. So here's our new parts going back. The new fitting for the turbo is part number, at the time of this filming, is part number BL3Z6A968C. That's the new fitting. The new coolant line, which comes with the clamps already on it, and the clamps already lined up and sprung there. All you gotta do is pull it to tighten it back up. Real good for the install. This is gonna be Ford part number BC3Z9U469A, which is the entire tube assembly. We will have these on the website under 67 stock engine parts. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our fitting in. This is an O-ring fitting. You don't need to put any thread tape or anything like that on here. So back down into the turbo we go. And get the fitting started in. A few threads. I'll run her down to the O-ring and then we'll grab our 19 metric deep well. There is a vacuum line in here. Be very careful of it if you're working in this. They get old and brittle and they can break. So I'll give a few cranks on it here. I'm using a long ratchet, so I'm not gonna get real carried away. Snug it down. There we go. All right. Now, the line. The line, again from Ford, it comes where it's already pre-sprung. You can see how it's the tab is there. What I do is I go ahead and attach it onto the junction block at the thermostat housing, or try to get it there close by, sorry. Go ahead and run it through here. And I'll get it started on the nipple at the pump again. I'll go ahead and push it right on there. And I use a little bit of lube on this so I can twist it in the direction that I want it to go. So I've already got it down there. You can see all the way down on my block. I'll get my light so I can show you. Adam, sorry. You can see it's all the way down on my block here. All right, go ahead and reach up on the line and Engage it into the jiffy fitting and push it down till it clicks. They can be an absolute bear too. So you make sure you're in straight there. And then just, if it's not straight, it will not go in and click. You just gotta keep working with it until it does. there. All right. All right. Now, 
I got it clicked in. I'm gonna go ahead and push my safety cover around and push it down on the fitting. We're gonna try to film this for you guys and I don't know how it's gonna go. I might, uh, might hit the camera on Adam and drop the camera down to the engine valley, but we're gonna try. So we've got the clamp on, the, on our coolant pipe here. I'm gonna let Adam get in there and get zoomed in on it. We've been talking about this a couple of times. You can see where my light is there and where the clamp is right there. So we've got to get that tripped before it is tight around the pipe. So I'm gonna try to go underneath of the camera here show you how I do it. I just use my 90 degree pliers and I just real quickly pull straight up on them and miss it. I can't see it. There you go. Yep. Out of your way. Yeah, there you go. Yep, I said I was going to show you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the joys of film and video so but anyway this tab what you've got to do you can get it with a pair of pliers or this 90 degree hook like this pull straight up on it away from the tab that will get it to where it will clamp down on the pipe okay now we're going to show you how to get the intake plenum back in these trucks um, make sure that you've got your sensor hook up and out of the way there is a vacuum line that hooks back into this it's got a push pin in it also one here over by the the exhaust back pressure uh, sensor i guess so on the intake i leave one of the bolts in there's a long bolt that's driver's side you have to leave it in because it won't come out with it so i leave it right there and when you're starting to work this you want to work it driver's side and bring it back around to passenger side there so I'll start it in on the driver's side, just like this. All right, then I will move along until I get it past this coolant pipe as well. Get past it and there we go. Then it falls right in. So I'm sorry that I apologize. I didn't get to show you the pipe, the intake plenum coming out, but that is how she goes out right there now um, a word about that this coolant standpipe right here this has got one bolt in the bottom of it that we remove that and that gives you enough flexibility in that coolant standpipe to be able to clear everything so now it's just a matter of getting our bolts in it and getting the intake back bolted down your intake bolts, most of them, if it's the long bolt, it goes in the taller towers. If it's the shorter of the bolts, you'll, you'll know where they go. You drop a short bolt in where a long bolt goes, it won't touch anything. So, this has been Coolant Pipe Repair on a 67 Ford. If you have a question about this video or any of our other videos, please give us a call. Look for the parts on our stock section of, of our uh, web page and like and subscribe to our videos. So thanks for watching.